If you are returning to visit your estranged parent after many years and they are now in an inner dementia unit with advanced dementia, there's many things to consider. Firstly, you need to prepare yourself with a little more than a few deep breaths, though that's important, especially before you enter, but just try and be as present and as focused as possible. Now, when you do come into the dementia unit and go to the front desk, really it's a good idea to ask the person at the desk, could they please take you to your mother? Just say, look, I'm a relative. I haven't seen my mother for some time. This is my first visit. I'd really appreciate it if you could take me to see my mother. Her name is Dida. Because otherwise, if they just give you the room number, you'll then have to navigate the whole unit, which you're unfamiliar with, find the room, one thing, or they may just point to the lounge and say, oh, she's over there. Well, that's a sea of grey-haired elderly ladies. Who on earth is your mother? How to distinguish? There's no name badges. So again, say please, um, if you take me to my mother or get a staff member, that's a good idea, get another staff member to show me where my mother is. I would really appreciate it. Be a little assertive because the front desk is always busy, but if they realise that, you know, this is an issue and it's important, they'll go out of their way to do that. Now, the same uh, thing when you see your mother, again, eye contact, saying who you are, you've been away for a while, reorientating her and saying that indeed now you're back. And, you know, as I said in the previous video just done, she may or may not recognise you, but at least through introduction like that, each time you visit, she has a chance of being able to. Now, assuming with advanced dementia, assuming when you arrive, though, she's in her bedroom and is now spending most of her time in the room. Maybe she's got heart failure or she's had a stroke or advanced cancer, whatever the case may be. So in terms of setting up the relationship with your parent, now that they're almost bedridden, um, it's a different equation altogether and it just needs to be reconsidered as to how to go about this. Because sometimes they can't tolerate big visits either. That's another thing to consider. But firstly, just establishing communication, how much they can communicate, how much they like uh, and can manage to speak or at least listen. Often it's mm, 15 minutes, maybe half an hour, is probably a good suitable time. But you can actually ask your parent. It's It really is a good idea to ask them and say, look, mum, um, if you've been there, say, 15 minutes, say, would you like me to go now? Or would you like me to stay longer? And they'll certainly give a response to that, you know. And if they're unable to speak, at least, yes, I'd like you to stay. Or, or just say to them, look, if they can't speak at that time, look, mum, just nod your head if you'd like me to go. Or if you want me to stay, just, you know, give a gesture or work something out so that you can communicate that with each other. Okay, so assuming your mother's very happy that you're there and she would like you to stay, it's good to set up some activities in a sense, you know, like it's nice to just sit quietly. That's, you know, especially if there's a nice view, that's always a big help. But nice music, that's a really good idea to tap into. Music that your mother, say it's your mother, liked, whether it was Elvis Presley or classical music. Find out which music she likes. You may well know that from earlier days or a, a sister who's still in touch may well be able to tell you what music your mother likes. But often it's the golden oldies songs from earlier in their, um, you know, adulthood that they enjoy and like to go back to because of past memory often being intact. So find out the songs and music she enjoys and play that at a volume that's suitable to her on your iPhone or whatever other music equipment you've got. And that background music is just really nice, you know. It just takes you into the mood and you can relax to it. It fills in so you don't have to fill in with conversation all the time. It's a good, positive, emotive, positively emotional filler. Now, the other thing is light. 
make sure that the light and ambience is suitable. It's not bright fluorescent lights, you know, so glaring. If you can maybe bring in a lamp or a light that's got a nice tone or shade to it, um, that's always good for ambience. Another thing is reading. Reading is a great thing to do for uh, people when they're unwell in bed, whether it's the newspaper or maybe a favourite book that they had, Pride and Prejudice, maybe they love that. Many love Pride and Prejudice. You can just start reading Pride and Prejudice a few pages each time and that it's reassuring, hearing your voice, your tone, you're there, it's supportive and it's not as stressful as trying to speak when the person is unable to, their recognition's low and it's difficult often to get a response. But still they're there with you, you're there with them and you're reading and also even though it's uh, literature that's relevant to them, it's interesting for you, you will find, you will find, you'll pick up on this literature, this music, this reading, it becomes an interest for you as well, because it's high quality literature and very good music. This music is wonderful, but it's often because we're not present in the moment with it, because we're of a different generation, we're into different things. But once we start becoming present with it and getting into the mood and moment, as your mother is and has been with it. Well, anyway, I found it very enjoyable being able to get into this generation's um, interests and their culture. It was actually really great. Um, another follower, a follower, uh, just mentioned to me recently. She was a care, she is a carer. That one of her uh, residents that she was looking after, her relative used to come in. She was a woman with dementia and. She used to, they used to sing together. Now, I thought that was singing and prayers every day. I'm not sure if the dementia resident sang, but certainly the daughter sang to the mother. I think maybe the mother did sing. I'm not sure how much, but anyway, you know, all the music filtering up the corridors and everyone enjoyed it, including the carer. Singing is a wonderful thing. If you're a singer and you can sing, to sing to your parent or mother is probably one of the best things you can do. And prayers if you're religious, that's always a lovely thing to do as well. So there are lovely things one can do, isn't that great? When you're sitting there with your mother, there's wonderful things you can do. And eye contact and presence always helps. And it's really good for us because we come into the present moment as well. When we become engaged with these activities, we, we connect, we engage, we slow down, we become present and life actually takes on a different perspective. It really does. When you're in the present moment, everything's much better. So the two books, Residence Voice, Residence Rise, I've written. Thank you for your views. Please subscribe.